So um, one of the helpful things I think for me is, is to sometimes take a look back at the beginning. And here we have uh, the text this morning is the beginning of the beginning. And it uh, even declares so in its very opening uh, phrase. And, and for me, I, I think there's just a, a good reminder to remember uh, where it all starts. And I think the, the book of Genesis is in many ways the declaration of, um, of God and, and God's people of, of why things started and, and, um, and how uh, God has um, uh, shaped creation in a way that uh, declares who God is and, and what God does, right? So um, there's this, um, well, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit. And then for, for me, there was something that stood out this in the reading this morning that uh, I thought was encouraging. And I hope it's encouraging for you. Genesis 1 it says, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So here, right off the bat, we see that there is a um, there are a few things that we can sit with. Number one, uh, God takes uh, a formless void uh, with darkness covering over the face of the deep. Um, so formless chaos, darkness um, over the face of the deep, and and the deep in many ways uh, yeah, throughout Scripture is this em emblem of death and chaos and. Uh, and then there's this declaration that uh, a wind from God is swept over the face of the waters, that God is there hovering over uh, the darkness and the deep. And what does God say? God, God says, let there be light. And there was light. And so we see that, there, that, that God creates by speaking. And then, um, of course, there is uh, then this sort of interplay between um, uh, light and goodness and darkness and uh, the opposite of goodness, right? Evil and death and all that stuff. And so there, there's, this goes back and forth, back and forth. And, and it's, it's a theme that's picked up throughout uh, really the rest of scripture. And, and it's something that I think we acknowledge exists in our world today, that there is this, we can feel this tension, this battle between good and evil. And, you know, it's, we see it in every, act of or every um piece of of, of literature of of art you know i mean it's just this is kind of who we are as as a humanity and then it, it continues and i think there was something that just stood out to me this morning that um i thought was was just encouraging where um and i never it never really hit me like this uh until this morning where it, it continues and um in verse 14, it says, God said, again, so God, God is speaking, and so God is creating. So let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. Right? This idea that the, the light, again, this symbol and, and harbinger of goodness and life, is meant uh, to, to give light to the earth, like the whole earth. And it was so, God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And here's something that I thought just was encouraging. To rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And so I don't think anyone uh, in their right mind would dismiss the idea, the reality that there is darkness in our world, there is brokenness, there is death, there is hurting, there is evil. And yet at the beginning of our story as, as a humanity, uh, the beginning of our story of, of understanding who we are in light of who God is and what God does, there's this promise, this declaration that God is the one who can speak in the midst of darkness and chaos and bring forth light and life and order. 
And of course, again, to reinforce that, there's this promise, this declaration that God is the one who um, creates light, speaks in light. And, and then not only that, but sort of commissions light, commissions these uh, symbols of order and light um, uh, to, to have, a, have a voice, to have say, to have um, authority, to have dominion over the earth so that God is the one who not only uh, speaks creation, but does so in a way where he, he seeks to have light rule the earth and not in, in you know, seasons of, you know, pockets of compartmentalized moments where, okay, now God is like, uh, you know, leading with light. It's this sort of this declaration that, um, God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And, and so he, he gives them upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate light from the darkness. And what does God see and uh, declare at the end? He says, he God saw that it was good and there was evening, there was morning the fourth day. So may we be reminded that yes, darkness is a part of our world. And yet at the same time, uh, God is the one who speaks forth light and charges the greater light and the lesser light uh, to rule upon the earth, to have authority and dominion and to bring light where there is darkness uh, in, at all times, in day, at night. Uh, that, and Jesus sort of summarizes it best where he says, my father is always at work, always at work. So may we be comforted by that this morning, reminded that even in the dark moments, there is a light uh, that has been charged to rule in the midst of that. Amen.